You know, if there's any better place to be in the month of December than El Cazador Ranch during the peak of the rut down here in Texas, I don't know about it. Absolutely my favorite place in the world to be this time of year. It's full of big deer, it's full of opportunity, it's full of hope when you come down here. You know you're going to see a lot of deer and it's really a testament to what David's done down here in that whole Tecumani system. Absolutely incredible to see these monsters down here. It's a good draw right here. Jail buck right there. It's the youngin right there. And then he's home, just a little guy. There's key elements to growing giant deer and they've proved it here at Tecumani and on David's Ranch El Cazador, and it's really age, it's nutrition, and it's genetics. And the biggest deal is, is age. You know, most people could have fantastic deer hunting if they could just lay off the year and a half old deer, lay off the two and a half, three and a half, and even four and a half year old bucks. Lay off the young deer, take the does, decent nutrition, and you're gonna have good deer. This is a form of acacia, basically the same acacia that grows in Africa. Super rich in protein, but there's no damage to any of this cover. And yet he's carrying an ungodly amount of deer on this property. I mean, it's just phenomenal what he's done here. But that's really what the Tecumani system does. It takes the pressure off this native vegetation, grows incredible deer, they've got great cover, doesn't damage it. In fact, it's better, it just grows amazing bucks. He has cracked the code here. Freaking buck right there. That's a good buck right there. Can't tell if he's four and a half, five and a half. I'm gonna back out of here. Get a little better angle down here. Sendero's Spanish for path, but in South Texas, it's a simple word with a complex meaning. Seeing deer in the nearly impenetrable brush country should be next to impossible, but Morris bulldozes senderos to create both essential openings and clearings for food plots. I mean, I had gone through one after another, after another, after another of these senderos, and there's deer in virtually all of them. It's, it's astounding. And frankly, this bush is so thick down here. If they didn't have these senderos cut, you'd never see a deer. It's just that thick. Get a look at this guy right here. That's a nice deer. That's a real nice buck. God, this place is just incredible. To walk away from bucks like that, take away my bullets. He's got so many deer like that here, it's incredible. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he's got here. Chris is showing remarkable restraint. It's possible, though, to be too conservative. David Morris uses a battery of Reconyx cameras to monitor his management program on El Cazador. And comparing current photos of one exceptional buck with past photos produces a startling and, for one well-known hunter, a cringe-worthy discovery. When we started reviewing our Reconyx photos, we found quite a surprise on those photos. About four years ago, Jeff Foxworthy passed up the biggest buck he's ever passed up. We know where he is. I might regret that. deer I've ever had. <laughs> I'm not sure that's considered success. The biggest deer that I've ever passed up in my life. Uh, we're feeling really good about it. We kind of described it as passing up. The truth is, he who hesitates is sometimes lost. And when that buck, like all mature bucks, had a time limit that he was going to be in front of us. And Jeff, because he hesitated a little bit, he let the time limit go. The buck went away. When Jeff saw the buck turn and run, Jeff had a comment that was a classic. Probably gonna try to ease down this road and vomit. <laughs> for Foxworthy, that hunt four years ago became all about passing up a shot at that deer. And for him, the memory kept playing like a bad song stuck in his head. And it's just a sick feeling. That deer's one of the biggest deer I've ever seen in my life. But I'm just sick, that's a... That's a giant, that's a once in a lifetime deer. And the nice thing is, I get to share the mess with you and then hear about it for the next decade. The incredible part of the story is that the buck, now and forever known as the Foxworthy buck, still haunts El Cazador for Dorsey to hunt. There's about four senderos here where you can see in this Foxworthy buck. I mean, it's, this buck they figure is probably almost 10 years old. They've been after him now for almost four years, so it's, uh, if he's around, he's probably here, but it's, it's damn thick. We're gonna have 
have our hands full trying to get them out of here. Take your time. Easy does it. Got a good look at that buck. He's a dandy buck. I think he'll come back out. I'm just gonna sit here. He wasn't he wasn't that spooked. He was just kind of waiting. Just kind of look in and then he trotted off. I don't think he was that spooked though. See you, buddy. Look at that. God, what a beautiful buck. If that doesn't get you cranked, I don't know what would. Never gets old, man. Never gets old. What a way to wrap a day. Some Darrow where they've been seeing that Foxworthy buck is just up ahead here. Checking these Sendero's and finally, I, I looked at this one, I thought it was still a little bit dark. Could be that buck. Could be that buck. Could definitely be that buck. Yeah, this is the area he's been hanging out. You know, it's a nice frame. He's a mature deer for sure. And uh, kept looking, kept looking. Just kind of sat there and waited for the light to come up a little bit. He moved a little bit closer. And then I could see, I could see this inner time point right between his G2 and G3. That's him, that's him, that's him. That's definitely him. He's got a little inner time point going on. Obviously, that was our buck. You know, that's the buck I've been after. It's the buck that everybody's been after, frankly, out here for about four years. Got that little inner time point going on. That's him, that's definitely him. Yeah. So he finally goes and he's now he's about 200, 220 yards away. Turns left. Here I go, here I go. Able to pop him right behind the shoulder. Thought I made a good shot. Damn, that was a nice buck. That's him. That's our guy. This is my mark right here. I don't see any blood here. This is definitely a mark though right here. Look how thick this is. This is why they like those high shoulder shots here so they don't go anywhere. Yeah, he could be anywhere in this stuff. Let's hope that bullet did its job. Oh, here we go. Look at this. <laughs> what a beaut. Got the outside shoulder. Look at that buck. What a beautiful buck. For the longest time, I couldn't tell if that was him. I just didn't have enough light to be able to tell. Look at that deer. This guy has got it going on. Look at that. Look at the character in this buck. That's an old, old deer. David figures he's probably, probably at least 10 years old. It's quite a different thing to hunt a deer as opposed to just deer. Wasn't out there just trying to look for a mature deer. I was trying to, trying to find a very specific deer. We had his address. Just need to know when he was home, that's all. That one's for you, Jeff. <laughs> Now I can see why you almost wanted to throw up. <laughs> Only see deer like this in El Cazador, these branches that they're really managing. What a trophy. You know, Jeff Foxworthy is a very generous man. That's all I can say. Jeff, you're now on my Christmas card list. But I'm tickled pink. You come down to this ranch, and to me it's, you know, yeah, there's huge bucks down here. There's fantastic country. I mean, there's lots of game. You're always going to see a lot of deer. But as much as anything else, it's a great place to be because David's here, his family, wonderful folks, just the whole crew that works down here. Chris's deer is 168 and 6 eighths. Take him on the food plot system, delivers again. You know, this is David saying, hey, I, I trust you enough, I whatever, respect you enough to have you onto my property in a very personal way. I mean, these are the deer that he has cultivated. These are the deer that he has nurtured this landscape down here. So he's sharing a piece of who he is every time you step onto this property, and I never forget that. I mean, it's an amazing gift, quite frankly, to have David allow you to come down here and hunt. And just to be with David is, is reason enough to come down here. 